Hello and welcome to session six of Scripture Shared. I hope you've learned some things and that in the midst of it you have uh, strengthened some relationships. We believe that studying the Scripture together can transform both your heart and your relationships. I'm here with uh, Thomas Harper, our pastor of prayer ministry, and uh, we are going to talk about a, a group of parables that are grouped together in your study. So Thomas, why are these uh, these parables together? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Tom. I think as we kind of close out uh, our series on the parables, these really challenge us uh, as the reader to look at the difference between saying that we believe, uh, talking about our faith, and actually obeying and, and practicing obedience with God. And so throughout all these, I see kind of a common theme of don't just say it, do it, and, and mm -hmm. be obedient to God. Yeah, I think it's uh, great because I, you know, I, I have known this parable for a long time about um, the, the wise and foolish builder. Mm -hmm. And we always think about it as uh, somebody who is either a Christian or not a Christian. And if you're a Christian, you built the house on the rock. And if you're not a Christian, you um, uh, are, have built your house on the sand. And it's kind of that way, but it's interesting because it says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them, on them. So it, it isn't about believing in Jesus here. It's about whether you will actually act upon, do those right. uh, those things. Yeah. So, so what do you think obedience looks like? Well, you're right, Tom. It is so easy if you look at these uh, passages as believers and non-believers, because then you can you can write off. Well, I know what category I'm in, so I'm good to go. Uh, but then I hear that challenge of like, well, even even Satan believes and and. What, what, how does that make you any different? And so if we shift the focus uh, onto the lens onto us and say, no, Jesus is talking about us as believers, which uh, soil are you building on? Uh, then it's, are we being obedient? Like we hear God's word, but are we living it out? So for me, obedience uh, is not just saying, I believe you, Jesus, not just saying, um, I need you, Jesus, but then positioning yourself in a way that you will respond to Jesus. <laughs> like if Jesus says, go do this, then you will go do that. Or uh, if Jesus says, um, I'm calling you to live your certain life this way, that you'll actually live that out and act out on it. So is it, uh, does it mean going to church? Well, I, partly, yes, of course, um, building relationship and fellowship, but it doesn't necessarily mean those static things. Uh, it means um, living out the faith that you have and not just saying, not just sitting in a, a, a coffee shop talking about uh, Jesus and how you understand him, but being a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, it's interesting because they, uh, you know, um, one of the things that I have uh, discovered as um, I've been a pastor is that you have, you have people who, and, and it, in, so, in some ways it's a generational thing. So some of the people who were in the greatest generation, for example, um, are not always comfortable talking about their faith, mm -hmm. you know, but they're people who are, are real uh, uh, churchmen and churchwomen who um, have been a part of coming to church and they, you know, the disciplines of faith are part of their life, but they just don't go around talking about them being, being a Christian all the time. And then sometimes you have people who, who sort of Talk about it all the time and never and never do anything. Right. And um, it's just uh, it's it's kind of like there's all of these different components that go together, mm -hmm. and uh, in 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 being obedient. Well, for example, the the parable of two sons is challenging to me because when I read that, I, I think about the first son uh, saying that no, I don't want to do that. I don't have anything. To do. I don't I don't want to do your work. And then the second son saying, Yeah, I'll do your work. I'm about you. Uh, this is great. Um, I place myself with a second son, mm -hmm. uh, but then just kind of sits and doesn't do anything. Whereas uh, while I'm sitting around just being happy about how I, I, I say I will do something, here comes the first son behind me actually doing it. And uh, that when I read that, I find that when we sit on our belief but are inactive, then we are not practicing obedience. Yeah. And sometimes I look at the people, the great saints who have given um, so much of their lives and given up so much, people who are working in the mission field yeah. and other places, and I'm so humbled by what they've chosen uh, to do. Um, and, and some of them are, you know, um, 
You know, one of my one of my favorite stories is about Albert Schweitzer. Mm. And Albert Schweitzer was a theologian and an organist and a scientist and everything else. And um, he came, but but he had this theology that was that was kind of avant-garde and really not very orthodox. He was really one of the first historical Jesus people that oh, yeah. you had to, you know, let's find the real historical Jesus in the midst of the Bible, that the Bible's just stories and you, you got to find the real Jesus in the middle of it. And one day he came to teach and um, in the United States and, and my uncle went to listen to him. And my uncle was a pastor and he, he listened to him uh, speak and, and then he said, at the, he he would just thought, oh, this guy didn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he said, well, I'm I'm going back to Africa, and uh, there there are so many people there who need help. And would any of you like to go with me? And everybody just sort of just sat there, and nobody left. And he said, as he left, he he realized that. Regardless of what Albert Schweitzer was teaching, he was obedient, right. uh, and <clears throat> and doing, you know, doing this work that he was not willing to step out and do. Yeah, and I think that touches also on this idea that if we're doing a lot of things or if we're keeping ourselves really busy, doing God work uh, or what we would ascribe to as God work, but we're not doing what God is calling us to do, then even that way we're not being obedient. I can imagine um, the the builders just building frantically and building this great big palace, um, but all the while uh, maybe the Spirit's saying, but that's not what I'm calling you to do. Like, don't run out ahead of me. So do you think we're, do you think like being obedient really means that you're supposed to uh, of, uh, follow the, the literal scripture, sell everything you have, give your money to the poor, come and follow me. Is that, I mean, is it a, is it a, I'm, I've got to go to Africa and sure. do the, sure. the thing, or is it, is there something else that I, means of being obedient? I think being obedient means specifically how God is calling you to be obedient for your life. Mm. So it might mean that God is calling you to go to Africa and sell all of your things, but I don't necessarily think that it does mean that for everyone. It's not a universal across the board sort of thing. Uh, I think as we are members of the body, we have many different parts and God calls us to do many different things. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at some of these greats, uh, patriarchs or matriarchs who did amazing things and think, man, I can't do that. That's not my calling. Maybe that's not your calling. Uh, maybe God has uh, something else for you to do in a different area, uh, and but but you're never going to know that if you're not um, resting in God, if you're right. not uh, building up that relationship with God, if you're running out ahead of the Spirit again. Like I said, you know, it's uh, when you say the word obey, two things kind of come. They're like you can either obey the rules, right, or you obey a person. So those are two, it's like, good. you know, my yeah. mom, my mom would say, you know, I would say, well, that's, I, I didn't know that was against the rules. And she said, well, I, I said it. So therefore it is officially against the rule. You, you know, you obey me. It's not that there's this list of rules. Right. And I think, you know, when, when Jesus is talking about obedience, he's not talking about following 613 rules like, like uh, the, the legalizers did he's right. saying follow me mm -hmm. you know do what i do do what i teach um live like i live you know our mission statement it, you know to equip families and individuals to live and love like jesus so that's what we're called to do is to obey who he was and that that relationship where we are sheep that learn his voice is is different than sort of saying, okay, the Bible's my rule book and I'm mm -hmm. gonna check off all the rules and, and that's what makes me obedient. Yeah. Tom, let me throw your cur curveball because we didn't talk about this in our preparation. Uh, but the, the last couple, the lamp under a bushel, uh, mm -hmm. I think you know, we find in all of uh, the synoptics. Uh, what does that mean for the church? What does it mean for St. Luke's or for the church as a whole to be a city on the hill, um, to not cover up the light of the world? Well, I mean, you know, this this church has for a long time uh, wanted to call ourselves a beacon church, mm -hmm. and that's an aspirational statement, not uh, not um, something that we have fully realized. But that idea of uh, we've been put here in this place not uh, for ourselves, but to shine to the city and to show the city what uh, what God's kingdom looks like uh, for uh, for all of us. And so that has to do with how we treat one another so that they can see, but it also has to do with how we treat others who are not 
within the within the church. And, you know, I mean, uh, our mission is of a city transformed by the love of Jesus. So to let our light shine as opposed to, um, you know, when I, I, I've said this so many times, but when I look out over our congregation every Sunday morning and I think if, if we could find a way to, to, um, to unleash mm. the, the, the potential that God has put into, into each of us, as um, may, would it's just amazing what uh, what would happen uh, yeah. around us. So too often we do keep our lamp under a bushel. Now I think it's important to say that when you read that parable, it is so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven, mm -hmm. not so they give glory to the church right. or give glory right. to you, but right. so that they would. Uh, Give glory to your father. That's why uh, with this idea of the church being a sign community, a sign is something that points to something. Yeah. So we point to the God who, uh, to the Christ who saves us. And I think that's important. Now, how the question that's in my mind here is, how is this different than being saved by your works? How is, how is being being obedient, obedient different? Obedient different than being saved by your works. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, We've settled this. We're saved by grace. Uh, we're saved by faith alone. Uh, that's that is orthodoxy. But it, we still kind of walk that line, don't we? Um, because if if we take that to its natural conclusion, then it doesn't really matter what we do, right? But none of us believe that. Scriptures don't teach that. So how do we balance the two out? Um, I think obedience is once you have. Uh, seen the light, once you have uh, follow, fallen into the grace of God, uh, then God is asking you to grow in it. God is asking you to uh, obey uh, what, what God has for you. Um, and so they, they are connected. It is kind of a both end. I will, uh, what is it, James? You, they will judge you by the fruits, like yeah. if you believe. Right, it's the but, same chapter. But you need, to, you need to have fruit to accompany that. John Wesley was very uh, about um, judging people by their fruit. Um, and so... Um, I think it goes back to that, you must believe. Belief is first, but you can't stop at belief. Belief doesn't grow anything for the kingdom. I think it, uh, it's when I read these, whether it be the parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew 25, where he says, if you've given um, to the least of these, you've done mm -hmm. it for me, or, or these parables, um, it really, it, it, it brings me back to the parable of the publican and the Pharisee, right. uh, who, where the publican realizes that he hasn't fully uh, been who God mm -hmm. wanted him to be and acknowledges that allowing him to receive that grace, um, whereas the Pharisee likes to pretend he's done everything he needs to do. Yeah. And so I think all of us, uh, this, this brings us to a right place, a right relationship to God, the, the, the radical challenge to give your whole self and to say it, it, it's never enough until mm -hmm. you've given your whole self. When you realize that it's not enough, that's when you are able to receive the grace of God. Yeah. Until you realize that it's not enough, you know, if you think, well, I've been enough, then you've right. fallen short. So it's this weird paradox that's right. there. Find yourself as the publican, not as the Pharisee when exactly. you read these. Right. Because it's so tempting for us to place ourselves as this is about the other people uh, that don't believe. And right. we should position ourselves as the readers, as the publican. So um, this is the last of our parables. Let's kind of sum that up. Uh, you know, what I find so interesting is that um, the disciples didn't get it. Mm. You know, he would teach these parables and they didn't always understand. Right. Uh, right. And um, I, I think that is, uh, to some extent, everybody says, well, Jesus taught in parables so that, you know, because those stories would make people be able to understand. But, but I think part of it is the opposite, mm. is that he taught in parables uh, in a way that only those who were believers would begin to understand. And so that as we begin to have that relationship with Christ more and try and pattern our lives after Christ, then we begin to get it. Those who have ears, ears to hear. Ears to hear, right. Yeah, L let them hear. Mm. So uh, this idea of, of a story that is put alongside another thing, so you have a... a um, a, a story that expresses a truth mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that also reveals a spiritual truth mm -hmm. about how the kingdom works. Right. 
Well, thanks for t- tuning into this uh, verse, this session six and this whole series. And I hope you have a great discussion and that you continue to, to allow the parables to keep spinning around in your head, to read them, to uh, let them plant themselves in your heart. And I suspect that you will see um, new things in them every time you read them. Thanks for being here.